Greetings everyone, I have some CD Projekt Red news for you today, but before we get into that, I have to do the obligatory, if you want to hear more from myself and Cuddles, about all the interesting stuff we've got coming up, Planet Zoo, Cyberpunk, oh, all sorts of good stuff coming up, then please hit that subscribe button, it means a hell of a lot, and hit that notification. And now, let's get on with the video. So this is not exactly breaking news. It's not. It's not right there at the cutting edge. You know, the latest tweet drama or whatever else. But I did think it was interesting enough to cover because I was reading, going through my various you know, outlets that I read every morning to see what I'm going to do a video on, and I stumbled across this and I thought, hmm, this is interesting. This this gives me hope for various things. So let's read through it and see what we've got now. The headline reads, CD Projekt Red, migrating to a dual franchise model with Witcher and Cyberpunk. And, rumour has it, the Witcher 3 sequel is in deep development, which is fantastic news because that game was absolutely brilliant. So, CD Projekt's latest financial report states the Polish company is migrating towards a dual franchise model with the Witcher and, of course, the Cyberpunk series. Managing two separate major franchises, The Witcher and Cyberpunk, along with several independent development teams, enables the company to conduct parallel work on several projects and smoothens its long-term release schedule. So this is all primarily coming from their financial report, which ended 30th of June, obviously, this year. This migration towards a dual franchise model supported by several independent product lines also permits optimization of manufacturing and financial activities. By creating broader risk factors and makes it easier for the company employees to seek professional fulfillment. So I hopefully do not have the crunch issue. I mean a lot of this is very much a still the crunch drama. I spoke about it the I did a little while ago, um, but it's worth covering again. Basically these development teams were really pushing their dev guys like crazy hard so they were doing sort of 14 18 hour days uh being told you've got to work weekends keep going keep going keep going those people having breakdowns going into offices crying just not being able to cope and needing to take time off because they're being pushed pushed so hard towards the end of the development cycle because this had to be done the classic bethesda it'll all turn all right in the end actually comes with a lot of blood sweat and tears from the people trying to make these things so that culture is coming to an end or hopefully coming to an end and i believe a lot of this is probably to make for uh, a smoother time for the people developing these games so while not unexpected which is true it's, this is not in any way unexpected it makes sense you've got two huge games the witcher and cyberpunk you want to kind of overlap them piggyback them so a good example would be uh, activision with call of duty so uh, granted that is two different development houses but you have the activision game coming out and traditionally you then had uh triarch's game would come out now obviously there's more developers involved now but that used to be it so you'd have activision whoop then piggyback to triarch activision piggyback to triarch so what they're going to look to do is, I think it's like a two to four year, they talk about this later on, but it's a two to four year development cycle. So maybe potentially every two years you would have a new game. So you'd have Witcher, two years later, new Cyberpunk, two years later, new Witcher, to give them maximum development time. It could be shorter than that, could be a year, but uh, that's the kind of model they go with and they'll keep jumping them. So a firm's report also suggests subsidiary CD Projekt Red is deep in development of a sequel to 2015's The Witcher 3 wild hunt which has sold over 20 million copies and is set to release on the switch in october now i will say this as a quick if you've never played witcher 3 come on what are you doing it is i believe currently on sale on gog and also on steam it's like 10 pounds which is Probably one of the best games ever made, I'll go out there and say it. For that price, is incredible. And that's the Game of the Year edition, I believe, which is, uh, or Gold Edition, whatever they call it, which has all the DLCs. Absolute bargain. Uh, so well worth checking out. I'll put, sorry, I'm going to put a link below. So if you if you haven't got it yet, it's for that price, it's definitely worth checking out. 
So I may already be working on a follow-up to Cyberpunk 2077. Now, as I say, this article and this news is not exactly groundbreaking. It's not new. But potentially with that, I because they have gone on and said that the quotes talking about a sequel will barely being in development. Uh, I kind of downplay that. They've said, no, 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 no. Let's, we want to focus on the game that's coming out. Let's not worry about whatever else we're doing. So that may mean... That what the uh, what the executive was talking about was actually the multiplayer that they were starting to develop, which we now know is actually going to be a thing. So that's interesting. Now going back to what I was saying about the two to three or two to four year cycle, they literally said CD Projekt Red usually takes between two to four years to produce a game. Initial development work occurs before the previous game in the series is complete and ready to release. So, i.e., Witcher Three is being worked upon. They're kind of looking at how that's going to end and where it's going to lead into for the next expansion. Blizzard have said the same thing when working on Warcraft. They've said, look, we already know the next two or three expansions coming out. I think Chris Metzen once said, literally like bullets in a gun. We got them lined up. Bang, 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 ready to go. We know what the stories are going to be. Now, they don't always turn out well, but they do know. So that's that's a standard thing. that Everybody does that. They've got, got the... Because you have to know how that story is going to end and what it's going to go into for the next game. They might not know what the gameplay mechanics are going to be, but they have to know. They have to leave enough threads there. Yeah, we've all seen those films where you walk out at the end of the, you know, the end of the film in the cinema, and you're like, oh come on, that's so set up for a sequel. That's so. They've left so many things there ready for the next film. So you know, game development is is no different to that. So during this period, roughly one third, and this is really good news. One third of all Cyberpunk 2077 digital PC pre-orders were placed via CD Projekt's digital distribution platform, GOG. Now, for those of you who don't know, GOG is actually part of CD Projekt, which is huge because if you go on there, unlike Steam, if you go on GOG and pre-order Cyberpunk, you are giving CD Projekt all your cash. They get all of that, just a big pile of cash goes to them rather than a percentage going to Steam and whoever else you want to cut it up. So that's huge, the fact that they're getting the maximum amount of bunts that they can. Now, what does this mean for us? Well, good and bad. It, just always, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and play both sides of this. And that is, yeah, it's fantastic. Continuous development piggybacking of The Witcher and Cyberpunk, two huge game franchises, is fantastic. And it's great news for us as gamers. Given the way things are at the moment, when you look at development, you know, you look at... You look at what we get from EA, you look at what we get from Activision at the moment, and it's generic. And they take risks, say, for Anthem, but they have no idea what they want, because they're so worried about what they believe we want, they don't take risks. They'll put things to committee. The original idea for Anthem was absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't read up on it, go out there and read up on it. It was meant to be kind of this, you were, for want of a better term, astronauts. You were on this, this planet, and you had these exosuits that protected you from the environment, but it was a harsh, awful world. And it was kind of more of a survivally horror kind of it wasn't the action. It wasn't the <clears throat> Destiny clone that it turned into. It was going to be something different, something new. And it was really exciting. But they were so scared that potentially people wouldn't like it that they they went with just a clone of something else. And that's the problem with these big development houses at the moment. They're too scared to produce something new and innovative. Now, that said, Witcher and the Cyberpunk becoming on a, on a cycle... As I say, it's great for us getting these these amazing games, but look at a lot of games that have been on a permanent cycle. The most important thing about them is not that they're coming out, it's that they have to come out every year. Even my beloved Assassin's Creed had to stop. They knew they were just churning out the same BS every time. So they stopped. They went, whoa, whoa, whoa stop. We need to look at a fresh look. And they actually took a lot from The Witcher and created Origins. And that's great. So sometimes you have to do that. You know, look at Call of Duty. Call of Duty, yeah, might have a new bit of garnish every now and again, but it's always meat and two potatoes. It's always the same thing. FIFA, you know, basketball games, the Madden games, all of those games 
are just because they're safe they're just reproduced because they're safe the danger is with this kind of idea is that the witcher and the cyberpunk it's more important that they come out for the company's financials than it is that they come out and they're special truly amazing games or to the point where they are art they are that good and that's the danger that you, in the sake of having to bring out a game every couple of years that you lose a little bit of the soul because you're not creating it to be special. You're not creating it with a vision, with a goal in mind. You're creating it because you need to. Much could be argued that World of Warcraft is the same now. That it's produced because it has to be because of the financials and not because there's not that love there. What they're trying to do is create something formulaic and that's the danger. I'm excited because I want to see more Witcher games. I want to see more Cyberpunk. We haven't even seen Cyberpunk 2077 yet, and I want more of it. So that in itself is fantastic. And as I say every time, in CD Projekt Red, we trust. So I'm going to be positive on this one. This is a positive. Um, I think if anybody can maintain a standard and maintain this love that they have, it's them. So exciting stuff, positive stuff with a tinge of just... Don't screw it up. Please, <laughs> please don't screw it up. That's me done, ladies and gents. Hope you have an amazing day. Hope you have an amazing weekend. We are at Friday already. Woo! Have a great one, everybody. I'll talk to you later.